Welcome to Legacies, a journey through the interesting lives of elders. My name is Roberta Robinson. I'm Director of Marketing and Outreach for the Geriatric Division of the Cambridge Health Alliance. This program is a collaboration between the Cambridge Health Alliance and Somerville Community Access TV. We meet people uh, today and we often do not have any idea what their lives have been like or the experiences that they've gone through. So we thought it would be uh, interesting to showcase our elders, some of our elders, and share some of their experience, strength, and hope with you. We hope you enjoy it. Today we have with us Juanita Miranda. Hi, Juanita. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. Do you want to tell our uh, viewers how old you are? I was 72 last Saturday. And happy birthday to you. Thank you. Now tell us a little bit about your background, Juanita, and where you grew up. And I was the only child. I grew up in Boston. And uh, In, I, in uh, the Dorchester area? Yes, Roxbury, Dorchester. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a typical kid. I went to school. And um, my mother was a seamstress. On Neal on Neilan Street, she was the first black four lady on Neilan Street as a four woman of a of a factory a garment industry. That was in the garment district, wasn't yes. it? On Neilan Street, mm -hmm. yeah. So she was the first black woman, yeah, four woman. Right, and then my father worked for General Electric in Lynn, mm -hmm. and my my grandfather uh, worked. He commuted on the weekends from Springfield because he worked at his slaughtering plant down in um, Springfield and my grandmother was a dry cleaner. In Springfield? No, no, she stayed in Boston. Oh, she stayed in Boston. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I was um, the second in my family to graduate from high school. My mother graduated from high school at the age of 16, but the family was too poor for her to go to college. Mm. So she took up um, sewing and um, she did that for quite a few years. And then um, there was this burst of um, Polaroid came in mm -hmm. and uh, she worked uh, directly for Polaroid, Dr. Land's personal lab technician. And they sent, him to, sent her to Harvard and MIT and Northeastern to get chemistry disease, uh, degrees. Wow. Uh huh. That's wonderful. So, and so I'm very she, proud. so it was the Polaroid Land camera. Yes. Right. Uh huh. And she worked for Dr. Land. Yes, and I was the only one that every time I took a Polaroid, I would mess up the picture. Up. Oh. <laughs> <You laughs> well. Know, but. And then you um, grew up. Yes, I went to the Jeremiah Burke All Girls High School. Mm-hmm. And I graduated, and um, I didn't go right to college. I had to sow my oats, as to say, oh. as a young person. And I just um, worked. I did little odd jobs, like I was a dunner for Jordan Marsh, sent out the m monthly bills and called the people. And, oh. and I did a uh, uh, bunch of little things. And then one day, when I was um, getting up there, I, I was like in my mid-twenties and I looked around and I said, what am I going to do with my life? And I looked around and there were three or four black funeral directors and near one of them had n no air to take over their place. So I said, that's what I'm going to do. Go so to funeral. Yes, yeah, so I, I went on to funeral school and then... Um, and how old uh, were you then? About? I was about... Um, mid-twenties? Mid to late twenties. Mm -hmm. And then um, that's the time when the food stamp started. Okay. And uh, I had already uh, went to um, college for that, to um, for um, Boston State College and got a BS in public administration. And um, still not sure of what you wanted to do. No, no. You know, you know, I was on this education hunger. You know, and just you wanted to learn everything, everything I was could about, you know. And then I went um, to um, New England Institute of Anatomy, and I, I got an associate's degree in uh, funeral directing, 
which was the closest you could get to a BS in the in, uh, funeral service industry. Mm -hmm. And then just as I was graduating, they had uh, uh, an advanced certificate uh, uh, funeral service, which was the closest you could get to a uh, BS in mortuary science, and I took that, and I was the first graduating uh, student with the certificate of advanced study. Meanwhile, while that time, while I was going to school, I would work. I was working at the Boston Police Headquarters at 154 Berkeley Street mm -hmm. as a civilian dispatcher. So I would go to school, and I would go to work, and I worked the 11 to 7. And I'd get off from work. And I'd hop on the trolley and I'd go up to Boston State and uh, do morning classes. And then I'd go home, take a little nap, and I'd get up at night and go back to college. And then um, I would have worked, you know. Then I'd go to work, so I'd get my homework done while I was at work. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, and then I met a met a guy while I was in funeral school. And uh, we were engaged, but it didn't work out. Didn't work out. No. But, and you've never married. No. No. Mm -hmm. You were on the loose. Yes. Yeah. And so um, then you worked there. Uh, it, it, while you were in school, you worked as a civilian um, police? Dispatcher, yes. Dispatcher? Uh-huh. How'd you get into that position? It just I, I applied for it. You applied for it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so from that point on, you decided that you wanted to work in? Funeral service. You were still thinking about the, the funeral, funeral service. Funeral service, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I started school for that. And I, by that time, that was the time when there was the big uh, BEOG grants that came out. What was that? Do you remember? The federal government had the thing for going to college. Oh. oh. And it came out with the same time the food stamps came out. Oh. So, you know, I would get the food stamps and Back then, uh, it only cost you three or four hundred dollars for a semester at the state school. So you know your BEOG grant almost paid for everything. You know, right? So it wasn't no strain on my mother really. That's wonderful. And mm -hmm. she was still she was working. Yes. Still with Polaroid. Uh huh. Mm. And uh, she uh, was a wonderful person. She was. Yeah. So at this time, you were. Um, uh, were you the first black woman to get that advanced certificate? Yes, I was. You were. And you were the first black woman on the board of the Alumni Association? Yes. I think that's important yes. to mention for you um, because that's... Uh, that's uh, and you were written up in who's who? Among vo amongst vocational technical students in America. And I think it was like 70, 1978 I was written up in there. Because I graduated high school in 1961, uh -huh. and uh, what stuck in my mind was that uh, when you're in high school, you know, you wear your ring upside down, and uh, my ring, if I wore it upside down, it still said 1961. Oh. <laughs> you know? Right. Because you couldn't, you wouldn't say anything else. So they didn't know, know whether he... That's yeah. right. So the only other time that happened was 1619. <laughs> or the... You well preserved at that mm -hmm. point, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, when did you decide that you wanted to switch careers from funeral service? Well, the, my back then, my fiance and I had broke up. Yeah. So uh, you know, and I didn't have no family in the business. So, and it was very hard to get an apprenticeship. So I just said, well, I'll try to, something else. So I went to. I wanted to get into being a parole officer. And I said the quickest way uh, to get into parole would be through via the back door going through corrections. So I, I went up there and I, I applied I applied for several positions uh, with the Department of Corrections and I finally lucked up on one. And I was uh, a naive city girl and uh, the place that I uh, got the first position with my um, Department of Corrections was in Framingham, across from MCI Framingham. Oh, yes. They yeah. had a minimum pre-release center there. They had two little buildings, and the, the buildings had, both had like 50 inmates apiece. Mm -hmm. And I was so naive, I was reporting for work my first night. And I went in and I said, oh, guess what I just saw? I've never seen it before in my life. There's a family of twin cats out there. And they looked at me and they said, you damn fool. 
they, they were squirrels, skunks. Oh. They were skunks. Oh, skunks. You know? <laughs> well, it's a good thing you didn't get any closer. <laughs> yeah, that's right, you know. Right. And, that, and that just, I just ended up staying there, you know, because I kept getting promotions, you know. And when I finally retired about 15 years ago, I had, I had uh, worked my way up to the rank of a lieutenant, which was one step from being management. Wow. Well, I still had the, um, the union protection. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was a level three, was it? Yes. Unit level three. Mm -hmm. But up to a lieutenant. Yes. That's marvelous. And then... Um, so they gave you a retirement party? Yes, they did. And at the retirement party, it was out in uh, Framingham somewhere, the uh, fire alarm went off. And at that time, I was the ACA coordinator for fire safety and uh, the uh, coordinator of everything up to standards and drawback. Oh. And, uh, and uh, they looked at me and I said, I didn't do it <laughs> when the fire alarm went off. Well, they did it in your honor, though, right? Yeah. Because they thought it was fitting since yeah. that was what you were doing mm -hmm. um, in, that, in that sort of part yes. of your career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's funny. And I had a lot of fun memories, you know, and I met a lot of people, you know. And uh, I also, to this day, if I see somebody on the street and they come over and speak to me and I don't know who they are, then I realize that that person was 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 doing all right. It wasn't in jail, no, in trouble, ah. you know. <laughs> because I used to tell them, I said, if you and I met up in a night in a dark alley, you better believe I'm the only one coming out of there. <laughs> you were a scrapper. Yeah. Right, city girl. So how long did you work for the um, corrections, um, approximately? Like 28 years. 28 years? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you had worked your way all the way up. Right. Wow, that's fabulous, Juanita. With no connections. Pardon me? With no connections. With no connections. Yeah, I didn't want to go past the level I was at because I still had the union protection. And you felt comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. mm. So they say, I've heard them say that, that uh, life expectancy after you retire from the, from the Correctional Institute is... Five years. And, and you retired how many years ago? Uh, about uh, 2000. And 2000. About 2000? Yeah. So that's 15 years ago. I, I, yeah, between 2000 and I think 2005, somewhere between. Somewhere in there. Yeah. In any event, you've beaten the odds. Yes. Right? Because you certainly made it past the five, mm -hmm. the five years. Yes. So now tell us about, um, you, you currently live in Clarendon Hill Towers, mm -hmm. right? And your mother first moved there? Yes, she moved there. Um, she was the first black woman to move into Clarendon Hills and like Clarendon Hills is like 50 years old. Mm -hmm. So wow. Uh, and she always had uh, the two bedroom apartment because she kept me on the lease mm -hmm. because her father and her mother were in Boston until they died. So that way, you know, when she got sick with the, the renal failure, I would go there and take care of her, you know, and she made me promise her that I would stay there, you know, if anything happened to her till the end, which I did. And you've been there, she was there since, for, for 35 years. Yes, when she died, about 2000. Mm -hmm. And then, and you've been there another 15. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you kept your promise to her. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're on the, are you uh, on the board of trustees for Clarendon Hill? I'm on the board of directors for Clarendon Hills. I'm on the advisory board of Door to Door, mm -hmm. and then I'm on the uh, board of directors of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. And it sort of keeps me sort of active and, you know, to a certain level, functionable. You know? Absolutely, mm -hmm. we want to stay active. Yeah. Um, but you, you've had some health concerns yourself, haven't you? Yes, I've had two heart attacks and two strokes. Matter of fact, my first heart attack, I drove myself to the hospital. Because I just started that was a acid reflux. Oh, mm -hmm. oh! But uh, thankfully, you made it there, and, yes. um, and you were taken care of there. So even though you've had your health concerns, you stay on the boards of, of these agencies mm -hmm. and you function. Yeah, and that's and that's wonderful. You, um, we didn't mention that when you were younger and your grandparents l moved and lived in the Boston area, and mm -hmm. when they. Health started failing that you 
moved in and you took care of them? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. And then when I was um, getting ready to graduate from high school, my father had moved to New York with his girlfriend, and he came over there and, uh, to the house of my grandparents and tried to talk them into letting me go to New York to go to college, you know, because mm -hmm. they didn't have the money. So, and I didn't want to go with him because we didn't get along, you know, I was a child of incest. Okay. So, um, I went to my uncle, my, my father's only brother, and I explained to him why, and he went and talked them out of uh, sending me to New York. Up to that point, they were yes. they were going to send uh -huh. you there. Well, they thought it was to uh -huh. your benefit, yeah, so that you would get the education. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad you confided in your uncle. Yeah. So. so now you've told me that you have um, a, after working all these years in the correctional institute, you told me that you uh, have a book inside of you. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to get somebody to help me put this book together. It's about. Uh, it's called. It's going to be called I Had a Hundred Men a Night <laughs> and the color cover is going to be a silhouette of a white woman and the silhouette of a black woman and it's only and people are going to think it's a sex book but it's only about a black woman working in a prison. Well not only prison. about but yeah they're going to be surprised when yeah. they find out that all these men that you had every night were behind bars. Yes you know <laughs> And you could always tell the uh, diddlers, the sex offenders, <laughs> they slept in the nude with, <laughs> with no covers on. Uh, you know, and I used to tell them, once you see one, you see them all. <laughs> so, um, Juanita, that your happiest time in life, do you think? Do you, do you know when your happiest time in life has been? Uh, when I didn't have such a problem getting along, you know, getting around. Mobility wise? Yes, yes, uh -huh, because the second stroke I had was a bleed in my brain and it affected my equilibrium. So a lot of times I walk around like I'm drunk. Oh. You know? A little dizzy. Yeah. Lightheaded, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you were free of, of your health concerns. Yes, right? you well, know. We can understand. That. I can be functional with that, you know. But the thing is that hey, whatever the condition is in life, you know, you're still here, you know? You're still here. And do you have a message for the viewers that one last thing that you would like to don't uh, let thought you would like to leave them with? Don't let nothing get you down. Don't let anything get you down. No. Yeah. You know, ir irregardless of what's going on in the world. You know, I sat back one day and I tried to think of everything that I've I've seen in my lifetime, you know? And from John Kennedy being killed, landing on the moon, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing. There are a lot of amazing things that happen and mm -hmm. this have happened in this world, and there still are a lot of amazing things people that are going world. to happen. You know, right? And the the first heart transplant, you know, right? It's all good. It's all good. Juanita, I hear you're connected to this Wally's Jazz Place in Boston. Well, he married my aunt. My aunt was a lot younger than him. Okay. And she just married him for the money, you know. She just wanted to run around. But, you know, and I used to tell him, Uncle Wally, why don't you just leave her, mm. you know. And one time he went and gave her money for a house. Mm -hmm. And uh, she thought she was going out and buy a house. Well, he had stopped payment on the check, <laughs> you know. Mm. But that's all she wanted was interested, you know. She was and he had a good heart, you know. He had a good heart. And mm. was he the first black man to... The first black man to ever own a bar. You have a lot of firsts in your life. Yeah, and he had like uh, people like uh, Dizzy Gillespie and all them. Mm -hmm. uh, Cab Calloway come to his place, you know. Wow. Mm -hmm. so and he's still there. His grandkids still run it now. And he lived to be a ripe old age. Oh, yeah. He would, he'd lived to be a uh, little over 100. And when he died, they gave him a New, New Orleans-style funeral with the band uh, playing the hearse and marching up the street and things, you know. They jazzed it up. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no pun intended. All right. Or but he was a sweetheart. You know, he was a sweetheart. He was a sweetheart. And he used to come, when I used to go by his place, he said, Oh, this is my niece, you know, what do you want? I said, Uncle Wally, I don't want nothing, you know? I just come by to see how you're doing. Oh, that's wonderful. You know? And you had another uncle, 
Um, my uncle Frankie. Yeah. Your father's brother? Yes, yeah. my father's baby brother, you know. Baby brother? Yeah. And he graduated from? Harvard, and I didn't know that he had ever graduated from Harvard till after he was dead and gone. Really? Wow. And he did a lot of uh, uh, civil service, you know, civic duties and things like um Well, he grew up with Malcolm X. Uh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he was an activist? Yes, an activist, you know. Mm. And what did he do for work? Where did he work? Um, in his uh, later years, just before he retired, he worked on the Indian reservations. He was in Arizona. He lived there for Arizona for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then he died in Albuquerque, New Mexico. In Albuquerque. Yeah, because yeah. he, he had some sort of big job with the government. He didn't, you know, he wasn't the type to talk about, you know. Apparently, he seemed like a very yeah. humble man. Yeah. He loved his opera, because I remember him taking me when I was a little girl to my first opera. Mm. And so you were mentioning to me that um, that growing up and living with your grandparents... Was the happiest time of my life. Was the happiest time of your yes. life and a time full of love for you? Yes, you know. And, and I knew that people cared for me, you know. I knew that people cared for you. Mm -hmm. And that's always something that we need to know. And that motivated me. It did. Yeah. It made you reach uh -huh. and go beyond. Because yeah. I remember the time when I graduated from high school, my grandmother, we went out to Jimmy's Harborside, mm -hmm. and my grandmother did have the money to uh, help to pay for the meal, mm -hmm. and she gave me $25 as a graduation present, and I had to give it back to her to uh, help pay for the dinner. Oh. But she was so proud of me. Yeah. My younger days with my grandparents were full of love, you know. They were as opposite as day and night. My grandfather drank all he could drink. My grandmother went to church all she could drink. But they were married for 49 years and 11 months and 10 days when he died. Mm. You know? And so that was your experience, yes. where that was not your experience at In my up. own life, you know. You are, um, it's, it, even with your health concerns, you have a wonderful presence. You're a very chick lady. And I noticed that your nails are done. And uh, Juanita was all set for Halloween. And you have some pumpkins on those nails. So I think that's wonderful because you're still participating in life. And you're still uh, enjoying what you can enjoy in life. There's one thing, you know, there's a saying that, the good Lord up above doesn't give you no more than you can stand. <laughs> and through every heartache, there's a lesson. Oh, that's the truth. And yeah. out of every tragedy yeah. comes some blessings. Blessings, blessings yes. That's right. I've been a, a, a few times in my life I have said, Uncle, no more. <laughs> I can't handle any more right now. Well, thank you so much for joining us um, on, on this TV show. Uh, thank you for joining us. and. As we have found out, Juanita has had a very interesting life, and we never know what uh, people have encountered and the experiences they've had. We hope you have enjoyed this. Thank you for having me, Roberta. My pleasure.